This video describes the scenery and instrument panel display system of my modular flight simulation cockpit. The visuals system consists of two modules, the triple LCD scenery display and the dual LCD panel display. The panel display is basically a wooden box, a rear plate, a box structure, two 15-inch LCD monitors and the front plate with all the switches and rotaries. The scenery display consists of a rear bracket which holds the three 17-inch LCD monitors and the triple Fresnel lens system. A foam cover is added to avoid glare. Both units are firmly mounted onto the cockpit structure. The rear bracket is made of a wooden structure and aluminum plates. I have removed the monitor stands and used the rear mounting option of the monitors to fix them to the aluminum plates. The final assembly is lightweight but quite strong and rigid. The assembled unit can be easily fitted into the slots of the cockpit sideboards. It is then fastened by screws. The instrument panel assembly contains the controls, switches and rotaries. It also contains the two 15-inch LCD panels that display the instruments. Here, with the back cover removed, you can see the wiring and the interface boards. I have removed the LCD monitor housing to minimize the gap in between them. The aluminum bracket holds the MJOY 16 interface boards. The monitors are also fixed to the bracket. The square hole in the back cover is to allow connection of the other controls. The complete panel display assembly can now be mounted onto the cockpit sideboards. It is fixed with screws and increases the structural stability of the cockpit. The throttle quadrant module includes trim wheel, keypad and mouse. It is fixed to the right side of the cockpit. All displays are driven by one PC. The first video card sends out one widescreen signal to the Matrox triple head to go box. This box splits the input signal into three 4x3 resolution signals, which are then sent to the three 17-inch monitors for the scenery display. The same video card also sends out one standard resolution signal to a 15-inch LCD monitor. A second video card sends out another standard resolution signal for the second 15-inch monitor to complete the panel display. The PC itself is an Adlon 3 GHz unit. The first video card is a powerful PCI Express card and the second video card is a simple PCI card. Here you see the triple head to go analog version. It has one input and a left, center and right output. Installing the triple head to go is pretty straightforward you connect the PC high-res output to the input and the left, center and right scenery monitors to the outputs. The box also has a separate 5 volt supply. One of the panel displays is connected to the second video card the other display is connected to the second output of the main card. In the display properties menu you can now select the widescreen resolution for the first monitor output. The two other monitors are set to the standard 10x7 resolution and they are extended to the main desktop. The result of this setting is a desktop that is now spanned over five monitors. When you start Flight Simulator, the standard cockpit view is displayed on the wide resolution screens. You can now undock the instrument view 
and drag it to the panel monitors. I have reduced the zoom vector for a wider view. You can also add the radio stack view, undock it and place it next to the instrument. When you switch to the virtual cockpit view, the instruments will stay on the separate panels. By saving the flight, all view settings and panel positions will be saved as well. To further enhance the visual system, I have added Fresnel lenses. They are basically flat plastic magnifying glasses that can be placed in front of a monitor screen thereby magnifying the image. The focal length of the lens together with the distance to the monitor determines the magnification factor. After lots of experiments I have set the magnification to 1.4 which makes a 17 inch look like a 24 inch. Larger magnification will make the pilot's head position more critical. The monitor screens will also blend together and the gap in between them will virtually disappear. A wooden frame holds the Fresnel lenses. Each lens is placed into the slot of the frame. You have to be careful when handling the Fresnel lenses as the side with the circular grooves is easily scratched. The slotted top frame is now carefully placed over the three lenses. After securing the frame, the final structure is rigid and lightweight. Then the frame mounting brackets are added. They are mounted just in between the lenses and due to the magnifying properties of the lenses these brackets will not be visible. The brackets add extra strength and they ensure accurate lens position with respect to the monitors. Now the lens assembly can be placed in front of the monitors. This shot clearly shows the difference before and after adding the lenses. Most general aviation aircraft use a flight yoke. The space in between the two 15 inch monitors is just sufficient to allow the yoke shaft to pass through. The final result is a yoke position that matches the actual aircraft quite well. The magnifying property of the Fresnel lens system has another advantage. It creates a sense of depth. Your eyes will refocus when glancing from the instrument panel to the outside view, which makes the experience more realistic. Here is a takeoff in my favorite Beechcraft Bonanza. The wide scenery screen almost fills your field of view and the fast-moving runway at the left and right sides will enhance the sense of speed.
I have maintained a small gap in between the scenery views. This is done to ensure that both your left and right eye will see a full view of each monitor. The scenery and panel modules are very compact, but they provide a good quality simulator display. Together with a good sound, vibration and motion system, the flight simulator experience becomes quite realistic. More details can be found on my website, including the CAD files that I used for this video. I hope it is helpful for improving your own home cockpit.